Oh, and that other website was a pain to cancel. Like they went out of their way to try to stop you from canceling. Nice. And you nice. couldn't well, cancel. That's what happens your when you sign up for for used panties uh, subscription sites, man. You, you can't <laughs> subscribe from them. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you asked me to do it because you're embarrassed. And listen, listen, I appreciate your support. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good area to start with. So, okay. <laughs> what do you do if your girlfriend needs to shit? Each time you have sex. Before or after? <laughs> <laughs> During? <laughs> During. Oh, wow. Celebrate. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, give her her space to go do that, I think. that's. Well, no, you know. this is, these, actually, this article is in the middle of it. Oh, okay. Well, that... Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm about to learn something new. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it says, without fail, my girlfriend always has to go poop in the middle of us getting nasty in bed. What can I do to stop this? <laughs> I mean, uh, it's a great question. I have I don't know. Uh, maybe just don't what, be careful. I mean, be careful what she's eating beforehand. Uh, make your, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, he says that my girlfriend has to stop in the middle during foreplay, eating out, penetration, whatever, to go take a dump. We've talked about it for her to try to use the toilet before we do it as much as possible, but it seems like she can't always do that. I don't know if it's being aroused or just the position of laying down on the bed on her back that makes her have to go, but it's really putting a damper on our bedroom activities. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's an inconvenient break. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I've never I've never had that problem. Um, I mean, that's usually it's what you should do is speed up. If you're finished in three minutes, it's not a problem. Uh, <laughs> so there you go, my friend. That's it's a problem. race. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just like, <laughs> race. It's either you finish or the poo is going to happen. So you got to be quick. You got to beat it to the. To the mark so um <laughs> I, I feel like that um that creates a need for a product of premature ejaculation so not, not to avoid it but to actually get it <laughs> in this case it is it is a bonus not a, not a, not a welcome thing. to dave's premature ejaculation <laughs> university I mean, I don't think we're gonna I'm, have you no. coming in under 30 seconds or your money back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's 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 an expensive class, but it's worth it in the long run. <laughs> so, you know, some of us gotta some of us gotta pay the bills. But uh, <laughs> if you don't yeah. come in under thirty seconds, I'll personally come there and suck you off. <laughs> that's not part of it. Uh, <laughs> that's that's definitely not. You're not in charge of advertising. So. <laughs> you get a lot of sales. That money back guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess you know that's 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 something you don't see too often in customer <laughs> service if you're not happy you get, you get sucked off one of, our, one of our eager employees <laughs> imagine hiring for that position so you're going to be taking phone calls and if you can't stop them from canceling you, you're gonna have to suck the person off <laughs> There is for sure um, a future where there are devices that will allow that to happen. You know, like you, you're on the phone to customer service and there's a device and you just hit a limit and they're like, OK, just put the <laughs> sex toy thing on. I will start I'm going to talk you through it. Yeah, it's like it's yes, like flashlight are probably yeah, working I mean... on it right now. <laughs> they're like uh, something where you can have phone sex that's more interactive. Um, I wonder what it's like working at Fleshlight um, customer service. I mean, I that is a job I want. I just I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that job for free for a couple of months, <laughs> no problem. Um, Fleshlight, <laughs> show. Let's, let's talk. Yeah, that would be that would be fun. Yeah, I would love to know the phone calls you get and the. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I just want to like know the orders people are putting in, like. Like people buying like 16 flashlights. Like what? Are you having like a flashlight orgy? What's going on? For work. It's for 
<laughs> Give it about to the best employees. <laughs> all of our all of our employees of the month are getting a flashlight this month. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> now you've been known to enjoy some breast milk. Occasionally, from time to time. Yeah. Well, th- this article is I had to breastfeed my husband. Mm-hmm. Mother recalls desperate moment her partner had to help her out after she forgot her milk pump on vacation, leaving her swollen boobs on fire. I mean, I, I'm not one to tell people what to do in their with their breasts as much, but um, I'm pretty sure you could have found a breast pump for sale or something. Rather or you could not send in happy family snaps to the Daily Mail along with the story of how you had to get your husband to drink yeah, your... Uh... that's also an option. Not telling <laughs> the entire world is an option for a lot of these things. But people, man, they just, they're like, hey, I want to make 200 pounds so badly that I've got this story to sell to the papers. Um... And my kids are forever going to be in photos in a newspaper traumatized by my parents. Had, I mean, everyone's had traumatized to... by their parents in some way, so this is just an extra step. <laughs> uh, yeah, but most people's trauma doesn't come up when you Google them. Like, <laughs> this is forever <laughs> going to be there that little Joe's parents decided to breastfeed. I mean, yeah. what I would say is try and keep your kinks out of a national newspaper. Uh, it's probably not the best thing well, for I'm you. Well, I'm also going to call bullshit on the whole thing, too, because she also posted a TikTok where she did a blind taste test on her husband with milks. So she had an almond, regular milk, and an oat milk, and then a breast milk. And I don't think if you got in some unfortunate situation where you happened to give your husband breast milk, which you then sent into the paper... You would conveniently also have been doing breast milk related content that went viral. I mean, look, it's everyone's a got a side hustle these days, and breast milk is hers. That's how she makes her extra money. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, blind taste taste tests are ridiculous um, in that regard. So, where do I sign up for them, by the way? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> I will remind your husband. Selling. Where um, like I'll do it. It's fine. I, I uh, reckon she's probably selling it. That is likely. I think that's very, very likely. Yeah, I mean, but again, you can do all of this and not have photos with the kids in the newspaper. I mean, you can, but then you don't like destroy them mentally for the rest of their life. So why would you leave them out of it? You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing if people have to look up your parents online, but if you're involved in it too, like. Someone's getting bullied at school. (laughs) Yeah. Or someone is like a hero and other boys want to come over for milk after class. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, a guy is fining his school, his, um, kids, school teachers. And oddly, this guy comes off as in the right. Did you want to guess why? (laughs) He's fining. Yep. He's sending them letters for fines. Um, (laughs) all right. Is it? Uh, like are these like really young children that they are being taught, or or I don't know, thirteen, thirteen. Okay, I don't know. Weird. Is it is it for inappropriately interacting with the students uh, in an extracurricular manner? No. Um. um damn it. He's. He so he moves schools, and the family had bought a holiday to go away during the holiday that was listed holiday dates that was listed on the government website. Okay. But then 
when he um when they did that, then the school was different to what the government one was. And because he took his kid out of school to go on holiday that they'd already booked and paid for and couldn't get their money back, um, the school decided to fine him for taking the kid out of school. But then, <laughs> yeah, because for not having a valid reason, which does um, sound absurd that the school is yeah. that ridiculous. But anyway, so then... Because the the learning is so valuable and whatever, they sent him a bunch of crap about that. But then the teachers went on strike. Thus, they decided. Oh. So he decided that fine, then he'll go and find them back. Yeah, hundred percent, absolute. They're going to be fucking stupid uh, with their fines for not sending your kid to school, which is. Oddly, taking work away from them, making them not have <laughs> an extra person to look after. So it's less work for them, and they ch decided to charge him money or a fine for that. So then, yeah, I mean, I, their strike could cost the parents money because they have to then, like, take a day off work to look after the kid or send them to a daycare or something. So, or, or like, give them five dollars and send them into town to do something. I don't know. But yeah, definitely, this seems, this seems, this seems like the right thing to do. Yeah. Fine every teacher in <laughs> Manchester, I say. Just for I mean, the sake of it. For living yeah. in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That works. <laughs> but yeah, they gave him a 240 pound penalty for taking a family on a holiday during school. Like, that is I ridiculous. Would... I would pay that with a check made out to fuck you. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, that's weird. Um, yeah, so it was before he the kid had been placed in a high school, so he didn't know the specific dates, but the government website had specific dates, but that school followed different dates, and they were unwilling to listen. Yet they were perfectly fine to go on strike. So nowadays, if your kid is in school and they miss a day, you have to pay because they miss a day at school. Or 240 pounds to go on holiday. That is some bullshit right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, no, no, thanks. You're you're good. Um, I mean, I don't I don't um, have any kids, so I don't send them to school. But I'd imagine it's quite a pricey. But I pay the fine anyway. <laughs> just I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, I interact with teachers quite a lot. But that's I mean, some of them are actual teachers. Some of them are just playing a role. But they, they um, like it's expensive to send a kid to school, right? So I mean, that yeah. is extra bullshit. That's just a teacher looking for drinking money. So, yeah. oh, hooking money, mean, which I condone. But um, yeah, it's bullshit, man. Yeah, I, I yeah. It would be a coincidence if you found out that it costs exactly 240 pounds for a dominatrix session in Manchester. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> <laughs> costs 239. <laughs> but you got to tip at least a pound, so. <laughs> yeah, you have, to, you have to tip or you're in trouble. So there you go. More trouble. <laughs> Tips are in advance. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Well, what's your most awkward date? Most awkward date? Uh, in like ever? I mean, is this a therapy session? Because we're going to yeah. need some time. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> um, so many years ago, uh, I was on a date and the girl started to cry when she was talking about her ex. Uh, that was kind of awkward. And then her ex is... <laughs> Her ex's like mother walked up to the table, was like, hey, uh, how are you? And just completely oh ignored me and was like, just talking to this girl. And I was like, this is weird. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was awkward. Does that, is that more awkward than the one we're going to talk about? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Probably was. It, it does was remind me of one that I heard of someone else where this was a girl and she was meeting a guy and... She was like, oh, I'm I'm nervous to meet you. Like, I'm 
they'd met online and she's like, yeah, I'm nervous to meet you. Like, I think you're going to think I'm ugly in person and whatnot. And then he's like, no, 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 you're not. Whatever. They meet. And then as soon as like they get face to face, he ran away (laughs) and then said, I know you said you were ugly, but it was worse than I expected. Wow. That's awkward. That is awkward. Yeah. Um, that's difficult to, to put up with. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, um, yeah, well, this guy, um, a man has suffered a hilarious fake tan fail while on holiday in Benidorm. Um, he attempted to give his skin a light glow, but accidentally fell asleep after applying the lotion. He tried to wash his face, but was unable to remove it, leaving his skin a bizarre shade of orange. Um, yeah, and then he had his date. <laughs> and then he had his date. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> the lesson there is uh, don't fall asleep with fake tan applied. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she reportedly blocked him after he told her what happened. I feel like that's the appropriate response um, in that case. I feel like if you're wearing fake tan to a date in a sunny place where you could like just <laughs> get a tan within... You don't need to be wearing fake tan in a place like that. I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like if you get... Yeah, if you're going to a Benny Dorm full stop, you probably... If you're dating in Benidorm in your mid fifties, you probably <laughs> got to expect <laughs> that the other person is going to be something. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I feel like maybe this was this was like a good uh, lesson for the man to learn. Uh, and next time he'll know when he applies his fake tan, and not let it happen that way again. So, yeah. Or just don't put on fake tan. I mean, that would be my thing. That would what. That's what I would do. I'd be like, no, it's it's fine. And like, I'm so pale and transparent almost. So I I still wouldn't put it on. So yeah, yeah. I, just yeah. get out and get burnt, like and be pink like everyone else. That's what I'm saying. Live it up. You're in Benny Dam for a reason. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, this could be the worst take on um, Prince Harry and Meghan. Um, basically, this uh, there's an article saying, thank God, praise whatever deity you are into, clutch whatever icon, crystal, talismanic rock you can keep close and say a silent prayer of ga- gratitude because it turns out that the world has been spared Prince Harry and Duke's of Sussex hosting Saturday Night Live. Which I don't think is a positive because that would have been an absolute disaster. It's kind of like knowing that your friend was going to put on fake tan and then fell asleep (laughs) and was going on a date. And you're like, do not text her beforehand and say this. Just go to the date. You'll be fine. You want to see that disaster. You don't want to. Thank God that it didn't happen. I think so. I think it would have been a colossal um, shit show and it would have been fucking hilarious. But um, especially they would have at least tried to get some stuff in there about like him talking about his willy and whatever. Oh, there 100 percent would have been. I think the writers would have tried to slip in uh, lots of different um, like uh, innuendos related to the, the royal family. Uh, and he would have been this complete cringe. Yeah, yeah. Especially with all the stuff from his book. Like, I think they would have... I, I think they would have been easily able to get him to do sketches and things that were just completely wrong and, and out of his comfort and zone. And he wouldn't know... There'd, there'd probably be stuff where he's insulting himself and he wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think it would have been really funny. But, um, yeah. But they, yeah. should, they should try again. Try and get him again. It'll be, it'll be good. <laughs> Sadly, morons celebrate that he's not in it. Yeah. It's too bad. It's too bad. Just yeah. gonna hope next next year. Next year. Next him. year. 
<laughs> well, Zac Efron is in Australia, and they're trying to cancel him. Yeah. You want to take a guess why? It's got nothing to do with being in Australia, but um, <laughs> he would he did a podcast in Australia to respond okay. to the fact that people are trying to get him cancelled. Um, yeah, I I don't know what what did he do? Um, say. I, I don't know, say something negative about someone he doesn't like, maybe, or maybe he wore the wrong color shoes. People get canceled for all, all sorts of stupid shit these days. Um, I mean, you're way in the realm of <laughs> realistic <laughs> and positive. All right. I, I don't know. He, um, it's, let's just say he ordered the wrong type of chicken sandwich. <laughs> so he got cancelled. Even that is um <laughs> Zach Efron and you might want to strap yourself in for this because this is disgusting behavior. Okay. Um a woman went on a podcast and well she added his disgusting behavior. She um she was dating him and um he went down on her too much. Okay, what's the part that you got cancelled for? That. What? <laughs> was he really bad at giving head? Because if that's the case, if she's like, he was terrible at it, and he just wouldn't stop. <laughs> like doing it all the time, he's really bad. He just kept getting worse. Um, maybe that's the maybe that's the reason. Um, no, I don't think that's that's not a that's not a thing you can be cancelled for. That's a that's um. That's like a good thing, I think. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. What absolute scum. <laughs> Zach, Keep him uh, out of the country. If you wanna if you wanna sign up for a how to give better head class, uh, <laughs> reach out. Give you some ideas, some pointers. Dave is the premium, premature ejaculation expert. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get you those girls lesson. coming in under 30 seconds or your money back. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to just point out when James offers your money back for things I'm doing, he's not officially part of the company and making official offers. No yeah, money back. I, sorry, I, I did. I did, make, I did misspeak. I'm used to that saying, but Dave's actual policy is that he'll suck your dick back. So. <laughs> Again, that was like one time uh, we said we'd never speak of it. <laughs> No, that didn't happen. In a Starbucks. Um, <laughs> so what is the most that you've ever spent on a Starbucks? On a Starbucks? Oh, I don't know, like a 20, 25, something. Like with more than one person and like ordering food and drinks. I don't know. Yeah, something like that, probably. Not not extravagant. What Starbucks. about if you like got like two drinks, like a... So this this family they bought a iced americano and a caramel frappe. I mean, Both that's, though. So, oh, I'm still. I mean, fifteen, maybe maybe twenty on a an, an weird place. I don't know. Four thousand four hundred and fifty six dollars and twenty seven nope. cents. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm straight out. I'm not like. I'm not doing that. Uh, how, did, how the hell did that happen? <laughs> so they basically had a um, malfunctioning machine, and even though the total was eleven dollars and eighty-three cents, a tip was left at the sum of four thousand four hundred and forty-four dollars and forty-four cents. Hmm. All right. <laughs> and the family had to cancel their holiday to Thailand as a result because they didn't have money. Um. Sure. Shouldn't have given someone a four thousand dollar tip if you didn't have money. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, so. Starbucks acknowledged the error was a sticky button issue, but the couple was still the family was still left shortchanged when two checks from the company bounced. So um, Starbucks sent them checks and they bounced. Did this happen in 1985? Is that why they <laughs> sent them checks or? Well, it's America. They, America still uses checks. Okay. Yeah. So it was 1985 because that's where they live. <laughs> but, um, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you could just do like a chargeback on your card and be like, that. it's not how much. Why would anyone ever pay four thousand dollars in Starbucks? That that's crazy. And that would be solved in like a couple of days. So I don't know. That's that seems like they're just trying to get a free holiday to Thailand um, out of Starbucks. Also, how does Starbucks not have four thousand dollars in their accounts to pay a check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Starbucks. I don't know. Sure, they can't afford four grand. <laughs> I know business has been tough for the last couple of years for a lot of businesses, but Starbucks have made it. I'm pretty sure <laughs> uh, they made it through. They're okay. They 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 have a good. They only got profit. three thousand nine hundred ninety nine in their account. They run a lean machine over there. I mean, you get charged for bouncing checks, right? So <laughs> maybe they, that's even more money off their profit and loss. So. I think it has to be like intentional or some. There's some obscure thing to it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, hey, that's just sound, it sounds weird. It sounds like it's not right somehow. Yeah. Well, um, one of your dates has gone viral. Another one. Yeah. Can you guess which one? <laughs> um was it was it the one with the um with the midget lady? <laughs> no? No, sadly not. All right, well then that will eventually go, but there you go. Um yeah, I don't know. I haven't uh, I, I can't remember most of them, so I was hooking up with a guy and his toupee fell off. <laughs> yeah, that damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 27 and was ta- talking to this guy, 29, on an app for a few weeks. We met up for a drink. He came back to mine. All was going well. We were hooking up, and at one stage, I got really into it and it pulled on the back of what I thought was his real hair, and the top of his hairline came unstuck. He ran to my bathroom and locked himself in. I tried to talk to him into coming out, but eventually he just asked me to drop his clothes by the door so he could leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a thing that can happen. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> the funny thing about this is, so when you when you start to to lose your hair and you you might look up remedies or, or shampoos that might help you in some way, you start getting advertising for these systems <laughs> that you glue to your head. And uh, but what they do is they they like shave you right like oh, this area here. So the sides of your head has your your own hair and the back and the side, and they just plunk a thing on and and glue it in place, Jeez. which is fine until the glue comes unstuck. And then, <laughs> then you look like a, a monk, an old monk or something. Um, but yeah, and it's supposed to make your, your toupee or your 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 hair system look natural um, because you've got your own hair on the sides and it blends in and stuff like that. Um, and I know this because I've been getting advertisements for these things since I was fucking 24. So <laughs> for a long time now. Should have wanted uh, toupee. I mean, hey, man, you know, it's... I go with the um, this look now. I think you know, except for the long be- one I wear, that's you know undetectable. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, no, I think that the I mean the solution is to, you gotta just accept that it's happening and yeah. go with it. He can't, yeah. Like for I me, mean, mine is okay for now, but at some point, it's gonna recede you know, it wherever. So yeah. like, yeah, you yeah. just. You've got, gotta, you've got to be okay with it and you've got to just go look i don't feel like gluing something to my head <laughs> that may potentially come off in sexy times with, with ladies that i like because <laughs> that can happen you know or you can't just say to her hey don't touch my hair i'm very <laughs> precious about it because then you're not getting anywhere um yeah, but yeah. fighting it makes it worse i feel like yeah. all the remedies to go around it just look Own stupid it, and you will be yeah. better than yeah you look Having like, the thing where you like just got the sides and the thing yeah. there, it's just like why? And it's super expensive. It's like it's like I don't know two grand every three months or something. Yes. Um, which like, dude, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, obviously, and obviously that on hook is like this tomorrow. where you just feel like a dickhead. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, 
So why should you block your girlfriend from taking a taxi? Um, well, taxis are can be scary, man. Depends what city, especially you're in or whatever. But yeah, so sometimes taxi dudes are weird. Um, yeah, that's. <laughs> I'd uh, there was a situation with lady that I was seeing one one time, got a taxi uh, from the airport to where she was staying, and the taxi driver wanted to walk her into her accommodation. She was like, uh, "No, you're you're cool, thanks." <laughs> uh, and what wanted to guy. get out of the car and give her a hug when she was leaving. She's like, no, thanks. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> um, so, you see, yeah, taxi drivers can be a bit bit suspicious, let's just say. bit sus. Well, I mean, that's one reason. But, well, this starts with, I was in a relationship with my girlfriend and we'd been together for several months. We were both happy and things were going great. But there was a certain truth which I was hiding from her. Whenever my girlfriend wanted to go somewhere, I would insist that she walks or take public transport instead of taking a taxi. At first, she thought I was trying to ask her to save money, but the truth was I was worried about something else entirely. You see, I'd been watching a lot of fake taxi. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking this is where that was going. <laughs> I mean, not that I've ever heard of that. I don't know what it is. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was wrong and I felt guilty about it and I couldn't help myself. I was addicted and couldn't stop watching. So when my girlfriend wanted to take a taxi, I was worried that something like that I had seen in the show could happen to her. I was afraid that the driver would be a predator or that she would be taken a rag off in some other way. I didn't want anything bad to happen to her, so I insisted that she not take a taxi. My girlfriend was frustrated after a while. She didn't understand why I was being so unreasonable. Um, we had a lot of arguments about it, and it put a little strain on the relationship. After a few months, I finally decided to tell her the truth. I explained to her my addiction to fake taxi and how it was making me paranoid about her taking a taxi. I told her that I was sorry for not being honest and I would do my best to get over my addiction. She was understanding and supportive. Since then, I've been trying to overcome my addiction, and I'm proud to say that I've made a lot of progress. A lot of progress, but that means you haven't stopped. <laughs> That's good. What is a lot of progress? Instead of watching 12 episodes an hour, I watched four. Well, he uh, says, I now try to focus on other things, and I have unlimited, I, and I've limited the amount of time I spend watching adult films. I also make sure to talk to my girlfriend about any concerns I may have, and I try to be more reasonable when it comes to her taking a taxi. It has been a difficult process, but I'm glad that I was honest with my girlfriend. I still have a long way to go in overcoming my addiction. I will continue to be careful and make sure that my girlfriend is safe, no matter how she chooses to get around. Maybe buy her a car. That's a good idea. Um, or use Uber. I, you, a couple of things, right? He references the show. Um, <laughs> not a show, a pal. Show. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's not like this dude just drives around and picks up chicks and is like, oh yeah, hey, let's just like make some porn. Are it's, you trying to tell me that they're, they're on? <laughs> there's contracts, man. There's contracts signed beforehand. Everyone knows what's happened. That's why they're wearing the good underwear that day. Um, you know, it's all, it's all fake. That's you're shattering my reality. Next, you're going to tell me Avatar isn't real. No, that is, that's a documentary, but <laughs> the, the Avatar porn, that's, that's, there's, there's an element of scriptedness to that. So there you go. What? Yeah. Just want you well, to Well, that's, just, now, now I'm going to have to work on my addiction. <laughs> I, I just <laughs> love the, it's like, I've told her about my addiction to watching porn and I'm trying to limit my... <laughs> <laughs> my, my my watching of adult films like no you're not, no, you're not. Wait, wait until Just... he finds out about his stepmother <laughs> <laughs> oh wait till he finds fake hostel never mind fake. <laughs> they ain't ever going on holiday uh, <laughs> well the casting couch he can't have a couch in his house because <laughs> unspeakable things will be done <laughs> Oh, yeah. I missed that coach. Anyway. Um. <laughs> In what circumstances would it not be appropriate to bring 
your boyfriend's ashes onto a plane. I mean, most circumstances, like if you're if you're bringing the ashes home from somewhere, that's probably the only acceptable reason. Yeah, you're doing that, and they're in an urn, and you need to bring them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, why would that not be um, acceptable? I that, that's. I mean, maybe depending on how you're carrying them. I don't know. I don't know. I. I, I yeah, I don't. Know. Well, how might you carry them where you go? <laughs> I mean, people are fucking weird, man. You know, I don't know. <laughs> well, not this person. This woman, she's pretty normal. Um, Sarah Button, a 23-year-old from Australia, was attempting to board an Emirates flight while carrying her dead boyfriend's ashes. Um, according to the New York Post, security officials pulled Sarah and her friend aside, assuming the sex toy was some sort of weapon. They were not amused by the joke, and Sarah ended up calling her dad to get assistance from the embassy in Australia. Sarah stated that her late boyfriend had given the butt plug to her as a gag gift at one point before he died. It was initially a joke because he'd spent so much time in there, and it was his favorite place, is her direct quote. Okay. Now, Sarah stores his ashes in her behind because she can take him places we only ever dreamed of going, she (laughs) said the law student. Apparently this... Sorry. So, the ashes were in a butt plug in Sarah. Yeah. And that's... I mean... And somehow they have a problem with that. Like, What's scum over in Emirates? That's perfectly normal. Uh, this is fine. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I mean, if it had been in her bag, it would have been fine. She could have then entered the the device, the 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 toy, the thing, uh, while she after she passed security, that would have been okay. Um, yeah, it's just about your timing here. I think she just needed to wait till after security. So. Yeah. Again, I mean, why do people tell the papers and the news publications these stories? So, <laughs> well, I, I mean, obviously, this girl, I would be stunned if she doesn't have a um, OnlyFans that she's also promoting. That might be an issue. Yeah, that might be the the reason for sure. She says, um, uh, the, the airport security officials who may have assumed the device was a we- weapon weren't laughing. I explained what it was, but there was a lady worker in earshot of the conversation, which led to some back and forth between us, <clears throat> and male of- officials did not like the vulgarity I was using to explain. An hour later, a big official came and had us sign a, a super long foreign document and said if we went outside the airport doors, we'd go to jail. Eventually, she and her pal were let to go, but it's unclear if she was allowed to take the sex toy with her. Okay. <laughs> All right. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I I know this is a weird one. I mean, if there's a lesson to be learned here, it's uh, wait till after security. Get your yeah, butt plug out. Yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you gotta learn these lessons the hard way, though. You know. Sometimes, yeah, life is a life is a constant lesson. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes critics need to learn valuable lessons. Um, and what is the appropriate response to a bad review? Well, um, like I, I think what you would the, an appropriate response is probably just to swear at the person and then punch them in the face uh or, or maybe if you can't punch them in the face just just swear at them that's that's maybe it. that's a bit boring yeah well a ballet director smeared dog excrement in critics face over bad review yep that'll do it <laughs> <laughs> I sound so vanilla now when I'm like, oh, I just punch him in the face. Yeah, no, just smear dog shit all over him instead. On their face. <laughs> yeah. 
Because <laughs> you're not forgetting that. You're never forgetting that you're going to taste it. You're going to smell it. You're going to, every time you see a dog, a you're going to be like, oh, out, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's not, it's never leaving you that. You're going to always think twice before you write a bad review of ballet. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, the Ger a German newspaper is reporting that the ballet director of Hanover State Opera approached its dance critic during the interval of a premiere of a piece on Saturday and asked what she was doing there. The newspaper said that he, uh, who apparently felt provoked by a recent review she wrote of a production he staged in the Dutch seat of government, The Hague, threatened to ban her from the ballet and accused her of being responsible for people cancelling season tickets in Hanover. He then pulled out a paper bag with animal feces and smeared in her face with the contents before making his way off through a packed theatre foyer. <laughs> um, he, he was just carrying around a bag of dog shit. <laughs> in case he saw a critic. Now, this guy is my hero. <laughs> the idea that you have the bag of dog shit just in case you see a critic. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a good idea. I would just like to point out at this point that um, it was the best ballet I had ever seen. <laughs> uh, my review was is five stars, 10 stars. Fucking wonderful. What a show. Um, but uh, yeah, just in case, just in case the director is watching. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it sounds like he's just carrying a bag of shit around with him for that purpose. <laughs> I'll find a fucking critic. <laughs> when I do, <laughs> he's, waiting, he's been carrying that dog shit for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, imagine he'd been carrying it around and, like, she didn't come to the the show. <laughs> People are like, why are you, what, what's in the bag? Ah, oh, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, sounds like um, sounds like uh, like he he had premeditated this a long time before the event actually happened. So. Well, so so she wrote that the show was like being alternatively driven mad and killed by boredom. Wow! In a statement posted on its web website, the Opera House said that her that um, the personal integrity was violated in an unspeakable way, and it said it had contacted her immediately after the incident to apologize. It said that his impulsive reaction violated the ground rules of the theater and that he caused massive damage to the, the opera and the state ballet. As a result, it said he'd been suspended and banned from the opera house until further notice, which I think is bullshit. I think he has stood up for the opera house and has done it the state ballet proud and I would never go watch opera or ballet, but if that's happening at halftime, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like he forgot about, uh, the opera house bylaw section four, uh, <laughs> part five. Don't smear dog shit on people's faces. Um, well, that's why they, maybe they didn't have it in there. That's why they've only been able to suspend him because they didn't put in their terms, their yeah, yeah. employment contract. You cannot smear dog shit on you. <laughs> you tell me where in my employment contract it states I cannot smear dog shit on a critic. He's like, <laughs> I thought it was frowned upon, not against the rules. Like frowned upon it, is fine. I don't care if people. You are tell me where it's written down. <laughs> I will apologize as soon as you tell me where it is written down that this company does not allow this. Yeah, I think that's a fair. It's a fair point, and we should all back the director in this regard. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He needs he needs the support uh, because that's there, that. This could have been any of us getting suspended from work. Yeah, any of us <laughs> could have been at work <laughs> without a bag of dog shit <laughs> <laughs> that we speared in the face of a critic. I think so. I think <laughs> just just anyone you don't like. Just you know, when your work is like fucked you off in your work, you're like, no, here's some dog shit in your face. And it doesn't yeah. say again that it, you can't it's do it. His First Amendment right. I mean, he lives in Germany, not America, but still. I... So <laughs> <laughs> the forefathers died for, you know. <laughs> Somebody died for it. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. We did not start this country to allow critics to write that we're boring. 
<laughs> I'm just expressing my freedom. Uh, of, and there you go. If someone doesn't like it. What he should have said it. is, is this boring enough for you? <laughs> he should. He should. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think we should. I think we. I think he should be reinstated. I think that's for sure. Because as yeah. well, how artistic was his response? Yeah. Um, Maybe that was part review? of the show. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I want to start a show where, like, partway through, we ask, are there any critics in the audience tonight? And if they say yes, we say, come up on stage. And <laughs> you each get a goodie bag. And then when they <laughs> open the goodie bag, you smash it in their face. And I think that's, you know, it would also cr teach these critics some fucking respect. Which uh, we're, we're, the, we're giving them an entertaining show so no one can write that it's boring. I mean, that's true. You know, <laughs> that's true. Say what Didn't you see will. that coming. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> say what you will about spearing dog shit in the space, in an audience member's face. But you cannot say it's boring. True. That is 100% true. <laughs> and if you learn anything, and if anyone dares write a negative comment, <laughs> on this on this show we will be asking for your address and finding you and expect I mean that's probably against terms of service so I'm going to say that I was definitely joking I don't know <laughs> sounded serious to me man <laughs> I would yeah. say for the record it was a jerk but you can stay <laughs> Well, you know, I think we've uh, we've we've learned a valuable lesson about how to deal with uh, critics and negative comments um, for the show and for all shows. All artists and content creators should take heed of his actions. Um, yeah, and yeah, I think if it's not your show, just turn it over a bag of dog shit anyway, just in case <laughs> you see a critic. <laughs> yeah, why not? Be supportive of the show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> If you want to watch good art, you need to arm yourself with a bag of dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> just everyone turning up with a bag of dog shit. It's going to be a stinky theater. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Set up a little stall outside the theater with the uh, selling bags of dog shit. <laughs> just in case. Ten dollars. Get your bag of dog shit. Ten dollars. <laughs> well, it reminds me of Gigi Allen. I don't know if you know Gigi Allen. No, You've never no. heard of Gigi Allen. I don't think so. It doesn't ring a bell right now. So. He's a um punk rocker who died of heroin. Who would literally take a shit on stage and then would um throw it into the audience. <laughs> um, he was on like the early days of Jerry Springer too. Um. Nice. Yeah, yeah, like there was there was punk rock as you can get. So yeah, he um, yeah. I mean, now you've mentioned it, it rings a bell of sorts. So yeah, in between I fake tap, taxi episodes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's just so much of it, you know. I'm just I'm trying to deal with my addiction, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> some people worry about getting like hurt in a mosh pit. They don't worry about getting. <laughs> Shit flung at them. Nobody considers it as an option. <laughs> Nobody. The most underrated should. attack you can do, yeah. At the ballet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the, at the ballet, you would kind of expect. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, it's probably a really high pedigree dog that had done the shit. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. I think she should be thankful. Like, this guy probably does have some, like... I pedigree dog, but also a dog that has an expensive diet. So it's oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Sure. like that was premium dog shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> None of that cheap stuff. That was top of the line. <laughs> yeah. Well, finally, why should you not watch too much porn? What, watch too much what? Porn. Other than the fake taxi incident. Uh, sorry, I don't understand the too much porn. What, that, what does that mean? I don't understand that. Um, <laughs> there's such a thing as too much porn? What? Well, um, for this woman or girl, um, 
Yes. Is it because you you get too much inspiration and can't possibly then achieve all of the ideas that you come up with from watching all the porn? Um, kind of. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, what were you going to say? Let's just say it. Let's just be realistic for a moment and say it's not actually a healthy thing to watch an awful lot of porn. Um, you can watch some and it's okay, but watching a lot, it gives you, it gives you. I mean, of, you sound like someone who's asking to get some dog shit in the face, right? I'm now. working on my addiction. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm reducing it. I'm limiting it, like to a, like no more than sixteen hours a day. Uh, so it's. I'm working on it. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so what did she get up to? She she so wasn't good for her because I'm I'm a, I'm a recent uni graduate. I'd been searching for a job for months and finally got an interview for a position as a marketing assistant at a big company. I was so excited and I was sure I was going to get the job. When I got to the office, I was greeted by a friendly receptionist who directed me to the interview room. I was ushered into a large, luxurious office, and I was greeted by a tall, handsome man in a well-tailored suit. Sounds good. Also, so far, story is going well. This is he, a great, uplifting story. I like he, it. Yeah. He introduced himself as my interviewer and shook my hand. Good. He asked me a few questions about education and experience, and then he asked me the dreaded question. What do you think the question was? It was just, um, do you do anal? <laughs> well, <clears throat> he said, what can you offer to this company? That's not the greater question. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous that I didn't think before I spoke. Instead of talking about my skills and qualifications, I blurted out, I can offer you a hand. I mean, you got to start low. Uh, where do you <laughs> <laughs> okay all right she can offer a hand um did he accept the hand or did he well the interviewer just stared at me in shock and then he stood up and walked out of the room without saying a word no no that didn't happen uh, <laughs> uh i think if we learn anything he is the loser of this story I mean, how did she say it? Like, it doesn't sound, it sounds like if you said that, it would just seem like you forgot to say the rest of the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I can offer you a hand. <laughs> Unless she's unzipping his pants, I don't really see how he's like, oh, fuck this, I'm out. Also, I mean, you know, he, he could be like, well, what else can you do? So <laughs> I don't feel like, I don't feel like that's what happened at all. But uh, but yeah, I mean, clearly, there's, <laughs> if you're going for a job interview, don't watch job interview porn. If you're getting a taxi, don't watch taxi porn. And if you're getting a stepmom, well, just going to deal with it. If you're going you to the ballet, it. do not say that it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just remember, <laughs> unless you like dog shit in your face, you do not want to do that. So, If you do like that, then you got to get it. <laughs> there is a place for you in the ballet. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see some things. <laughs> so you thought the ballet was people dancing around and being all delicate and everything. No, it's a kink world with um, dog shit and all kinds of weirdness going That's on. That's what people don't understand about ballet. Mm. Like a lot yeah. of people are like, yeah, these people are just look at this terrible, boring stuff. They don't know. They don't. They don't know. They just. Uh, but they're 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 finding out now thanks to the spotlight we're shining on it. Um, however, just getting back to the interview, I think like did did he come back? Did he like did he need to go get some lotion or something? What was the outcome? Of the lady who was watching all the porn at her job interview. Uh, <clears throat> just as I left the office, feeling extremely embarrassed and ashamed of myself. I went home and tried to forget about the incident, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd ruined my chances. I'd done something so stupid and I felt like such an idiot. Oh. Well, you know, there's only one career left for you to take. <laughs> and it is giving hands to people on the Internet. So, yeah, well, I mean, it never said exactly. It, oh, she did say marketing assistant, but. 
maybe that big company was a dodgy massage place and <laughs> it was browsers.com uh, <laughs> like, yeah i don't feel like i don't feel like um they would have responded in that way to that to that request but it still it still seems so innocent like like she she could have just said some unless she acted like started walking towards him staring at his crack <laughs> i don't think he's gonna react by being like oh i'm out of here like so yeah i don't know i mean yeah it's gonna be awkward as the guy as to what the fuck do you do in that situation yeah yeah which is why in a, a physical interview in a room you should never be by yourself when you're no. an interview never because that's especially as a no. man with a woman yeah like exactly that. Because you, you get in trouble because a lot of dudes, they get that offer. They're like, OK, let's do it. You got the job. <laughs> and then you're like, well, what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> what can you bring to the company? Well, I'm really good with my hands. <laughs> um, put it like that. Maybe I can understand the, uh, the the situation a bit more. But um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, if I was interviewing somebody and they said that, I'd be like, could you? <laughs> Maybe start that answer again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe keep a professional tone this time. We can, you know, can talk about that after work on your first day. But I, <laughs> yeah. And please, mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Just a hand. <laughs> You're not going to fit in here. <laughs> um, yeah. But hey, if the lesson to be learned is don't. Prepare for your job interview by watching porn interviews. <laughs> That's not how no, the lesson to be learned is don't offer hand jobs when you can offer a blow job. That is a lesson to be learned. I think that's quite a <laughs> And don't you dare insult ballet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've, we're learning so much. It's, uh, it's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, also, don't base your life decisions on porn. That's, that's something I want to stress. You should not, um, you know, a bit late now. Taxis, you know, don't be like going to job interviews and basing them off porn you watched, stuff like that. So, you know, that's just, it's just my, my life advice for this week. Yeah. Oddly, there's no review. I just quickly went onto their site for reviews of the ballet place. (laughs) There's no one there writing. Like I would have. But like, yeah. Worst show I've seen. Don't no, don't say Emphasis that. Emphasis on seen. <laughs> Halftime entertainment is is better than the Super Bowl. <laughs> um, no, just leave it. Leave it. Ah, <laughs> uh, he did get sacked in the end, which is just. Start his own ballet with dog yeah. shit. <laughs> dog shit and hookers. It's a whole other version of ballet. Now that's um, a ballet I would see. <laughs> you never know, man. It, 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 we, we're going to expand our horizons by going to ballet and just, like bringing bags of dog shit with us for the critics. Yeah, I mean, take uh, the uh, guitar videos to a whole new level if you start covering ballet. <laughs> It would. That's something I need to look into. I think so bringing, bringing more culture to my yeah to my guitar content. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. There's, there's someone posted a photo of um the guy with a speech bubble saying, "You want poop with that?" <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can imagine why I wouldn't want to go particularly to that um, to that ballet anymore after after that. Just in case, just keep walking around with a big smile on your face. This is the greatest show I've ever seen. He actually, um, he actually justified it in um, interviews too. So nice, nice. (laughs) (laughs) Saying that he's. After having his work soiled for years, once a certain point has been reached, I disagree. So basically justifying that. Yeah. 
so so basically he'd been getting bad reviews for a long time so he wasn't happy with that <laughs> yeah do something about it all right but he's not going to get many more bad reviews anymore so good good thinking on his part <laughs> he's my hero <laughs> like if you're gonna do it just double down i mean what else are you gonna do next time i have a workplace um interaction that goes sour and I'm going to be trying to make that happen, <laughs> bringing out the dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. Don't mess with these director fellas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Don't, don't, don't call ballet boring if you don't realize. True, true. So much to it these days. It's not the ballet your parents went to. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? <laughs> you get a little bit about your parents now. <laughs> True. Stuff you don't want to know. But there you go. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, we learned a lot. It's been an it's been a fun one. Um got bags to repair. Now, I mean, you know, now I just got to hope I get a, a job interview in the next couple of months. And now I know what to do. <laughs> Need a hand with that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> so, yeah. What's even better is the guy on Google, on Google, his personal Facebook account comes up, which is still active. So anyone could just reach out and message him. Do it, do it. <laughs> you can add him as a friend and yeah. <laughs> he puts up uh, one of those things. How did we become friends? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did um, attend a punk rock show 10 years ago, so he's very punk rock. See, <laughs> he seems it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what'll do it to you. Punk rock will turn you hardcore. So, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, now that we're going to have new Facebook friends. Um, <laughs> all good. But, um, but yeah, I think we should we should leave it for there for now and. Um, Reflect on the lives of others for the rest of the <laughs> And search out where we can get a good bag. <laughs> yeah. yeah, review bags on Amazon for such activities. Um, see which ones would be the best. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, going to be carrying around some dog shit for a while. So <laughs> that's for me, people. Just uh, in case. <laughs> yeah, you know what's going to happen to you. <laughs> All right, man. Well, it's been a good one.